Hello, everyone. My name is Siyama Aksani. I'm the CEO of World Hearing Organization. <laughs> so what would it be like if we couldn't hear each other? <laughs> imagine one minute, imagine one day, imagine a lifetime. If a child can't hear, they'll never develop speech. They'll go on in life wondering what it's like to hear sounds of life. So we've made it our mission to address the one billion people needs who cannot hear. We have brought on some of the world's most amazing technologies into products, and I'll tell you more about it and how we're about to disrupt using innovation. It's a very high impact investment, a very late stage profile for the company. We are launch ready. We have acquired $50 million in technology leadership from a semiconductor silicon standpoint, given that this was a silicon event. Uh, we have moved it into product, have had clinical trials, and uh, we're looking for two million in bridge or five million in investment, and I'd love to show you how we can give you a better than 10x and maybe 20x return on investment in a few short years. We have a great management team, and our technology enable us to disrupt the market with a better than a 10x price drop and a 20x performance enhancement. Hearing loss affects globally uh, to the tune of $750 billion of economic loss. Many countries have a piece of this. US is about 40 billion, China is about 60, 70 billion, and I'm sure a lot of the governments would like to solve this economic impact by creating jobs and allowing people to go back to work. And actually, hearing loss affects a large number of other issues and disorders such as dementia, Alzheimer, falls, balance, social isolation, which leads to depression. We are looking at a very specific medical market for our products. There are consumer and there is a high end which today serves less than 1%. We have looked at all of those and we believe that where we are today is going to be very difficult for others to enter. And with the recent FDA deregulation of the US market, there is energy which is welcome by big players like Google and Apple and many others to enter it from a consumer side, further validating this huge market opportunity. Why only 1% of the world and 4% of the US? Well, if it costs $5,000 average per person in the US, it's hard to uh, afford it. But there's a stigma, there's denial, there's a host of other issues, but lack of innovation to bring the prices down by cohorts who are in there and enjoying the profit has a lot to do with it. And that's where we're about to come in and disrupt using the innovation that we brought to all the current cohorts. Just for your information, our IP as the original leader who brought technology to all hearing aids is today a standard in all hearing aids. So we address the main key issues in the market of affordability, accessibility by bringing it over the counter, direct to consumer, or across all medical channels, pharmacies, hospitals, as I said, we have a highly disruptive 10x price drop, and at that we enjoy better than 70% margins. Again, I'm happy to tell you that. And of course, acceptability, quality, and patient's experience is very important for us. And I'm proud to tell you that with over 20, 25,000 units in the market, we have yet to see one back. And that's incredible compared to what's out there today. The disruption comes from a nation of world's only system on chip that allows all the features that I discussed in terms of price, technology, core strengths, and so on. And now with devices, with FDA approval, even China FDA approval, customer traction, we're ready to launch. Our technology has been benchmarked by some of the largest technology company, ST Micro, against the best of the best. Again, I'm happy to show you the details of it. Why? With electrical parameters, superiority, and feature performance, why we are the only one that actually can provide an HD analog performance on the audio side and address the issues of patient satisfaction, cost, and over-the-counter model for a medical device. Our clinical trial results were astounding with over 100 patients. I can tell you that we hit satisfaction ratings above 95%, and um, this compared to other such trials in the world is unheard of. And uh, again, with two models and two prescriptions, we satisfied 95% of losses instantly without the need for a doctor, 
without the need for an audiologist. And this is where innovation meets disruption. We have a highly passionate and committed team of industry leaders in the field of audiology, in the field of technology for hearing aids, as I told you, some of our uh, CTO and technology leaders designed the first three ICs for all hearing aids. And we're happy to bring now a China CEO on board and have significant traction and progress in China. And our advisor list continues to grow with top members of AARP, National Council on Aging and Technology in Silicon Valley. Our strategy is very simple, focus. U.S. and China market, the U.S. market has become a focus since the deregulation of 2017, which opens over-the-counter markets for us, which our product was designed for. Yes, we were visionaries and about 10 years ahead of it, but the market has caught up and their FDA regulation has caught up. We have traction in China and we have now, in, we are in discussion with some big names, Best Buy, CVS, and so on and so forth. Again, more details as we go on. But some of the big names in China, like Joint Town, Sinopharm, Shanghai Pharma, are actually under signed agreement with us. I will forego the financials, and I'll tell you we have raised about $1.9 million to date from strategic partners, a very big name private equity firm in Europe called Ilex, and a local public company called Invensys, who actually provides us with key components inside the hearing gate for a very attractive price. Um, I think I've gone over most of our accomplishment today, but we have a very significant inventory of our chips and products on hand for launch across US and China. And we have a very nice set of customers who actually have testimonials as to why this is so much better than the $10,000 pair of hearing aids they bought. Look forward to your questions, comments, and anything else I can add. Thank you. Uh, thank you for wonderful presentation. So uh, I, I think the, 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 the product is very, very valuable for aging population, but uh, um, the market seems like a lot of offering already. So you mentioned this IC chip design. So could you tell, uh, tell a little more about the technology advantage? And uh, secondly, uh, you mentioned you raised a seed fund and you got a, a China FDA approval already. Is a, what, uh, can you elaborate a little more? Sure. sure. So, a little bit about your question of technology advantage. So all the hearing aids out there, as I said, got where they are based on the back of our IP. Today, 100% of high-tech hearing aids, which again, all of them serve less than 1% of the need. So there are not a lot of players out there that address the need. Anything that's 99% open, it's open basically, it's unmet need. But this was done by the HD Micro. This is the details as far as electrical parameters and feature parameters of our device compared to the top end of Siemens, Phonak, and so on and so forth. Gain, distortion, input noise, and maybe more important than all of them is the processor latencies. That's the difference between an analog amplifier and a digital amplifier, which actually allows it to work in noisy situation, which is the biggest complaint from current hearing gate users, that it doesn't work in noise. So we are the only one that can handle all of this, as you see on the right, with a yes across all the features. We have significant IP that's protected we have significant trade secret that protects this technology. So that's as far as the um, why are we the best and why is the system on chip delivering the promise that it does. Yeah. Um, second part of my question. Uh, yeah. Second part, okay. <laughs> go ahead. So um, they, again, from a market standpoint, from a leadership standpoint, we are the one that designed the first ICs for all hearing aids. And again, um, first the first three ICs that transition all hearing aids out forward. So we know the market very well, we know all the players very well, and uh, again, we're focused on the 99% of the market that's open. And yes, we can create a Lamborghini for the 1%, but then that goes against the grain of what we're here to do. Go ahead. Yeah, so I think, um, you know, it's great that you're already thinking, um, you know, the US and China market, um, and it, it, it's great, thank you for your explanation about um, your technology. By the way, how many patents do you guys currently have? And I also be curious about, um, you know, how are you gonna, you know, what what is your forecast? How are you gonna ramp, uh, you know, in terms sure. of using your technology and trying to be a market right. segmentation leader at least, okay. right? So um, the again, the China and the U.S. 
have different paths to market. In China, undertaking branding and promotion is very heavy. So we work through strategic partners like Sinopharm and Joint Town and Shanghai Pharma. Of course, we leave two-thirds of the revenue in their bag, but still at one third, if I'm making 60, 70% margin, that's very great. So we have signed agreement with them. We have had clinical trials with them, and two years later, they will tell you that we have 100% satisfaction, which is unheard of. So that's our strategy for China. In the US, we have a double barrel. One is to work with CVS and Best Buy and, all, and bring insurance to the market because it doesn't happen right now. At the same time, we have direct-to-market strategies across the internet and across the consumer channels. Again, Best Buy, CVS, and so on. So there's a consumer path for a lower price, and then there's a medical path to market. We can do all, because our costs cannot be beaten by anybody. My SOC costs are significant. And I just want to say one more thing. As far as CFDA is concerned, and I, just, you know, I didn't want to forget about that, we have our CFDA. It took two years, and it wasn't cheap, but we have it through our China manufacturer. So we provide, similar to the Apple model, we provide them with our key technology component, our, chi and our chip and microphone. They assemble for us, and then we purchase from them and distribute. Right, right. So on that front, that's great. Um, so I guess how much money are you planning to raise? And if you're able to successfully you know, get that much funding, what do you see the sort of forecast within the next three to five years, for instance? Sure. But I guess the question then, I mean, also before that, I want you to, you're saying that you're significantly lower in terms of price. Mm -hmm. So how much do you, I mean, how much are you, you know, compared to the existing products, right? Right. And, you know, performance-wise and price-wise, how much better, I guess? So we have a established by ST Micro, a 25x speed performance advantage, 30% better noise and distortion and all those advantages, and 15% current advantage. All those are, again, technology-wise. From a price standpoint, at one-tenth of the current market prices, so an average price of a hearing aid today is $2,500. At $250, at retail level, which means that we're 50 or 30%, we'll still enjoy 60, 65% margin. We don't need to be down that low at this point in time. We can operate in the middle at the medical grade and maybe a double of that at one third of current market prices, which is where we have benchmark and have data. We can do well and leave more margin for the doctors and those in the middle because everybody needs some margin. Sure. Okay, great. Uh, to be successful in one market is already amazing. Mm -hmm. You are attacking two at the same time. Mm -hmm. All right, kudos to you to that. Are there any uh, experience or lesson you can share and learn from each unique market? Can, yes. can you leverage it from yes. one to the other? Yes. So um, obviously, yes, anything we do in China or most of the China products and manufacturers, eventually they're eyeing the largest market in the world, which is the US. So you can look at that angle or you can go the other way, which we have looked at. Um, the lesson I can tell you is timing is everything. The current um, relationship or environment between US and China has created what some call a nuclear winter um, and has significantly reduced the amount of dollars available on this side or the flow of it. And to me, that has been the biggest kind of issue. Though we have found light at the end of that tunnel and we're working with some investors who have actually uh, are very close in uh, you know, making deals with us. But the rest of them, uh, and the key reason for that is that we do not have any problem with the CFIUS, with the Department of Treasury, our technology is free and clear from all that, which is significant, which is one of the things that has kind of caused this issue with respect to our IP and technology and so on for transfer into China or not transfer. So yes, it's not easy to handle both, but because China likes scale, because China is looking for technologies to go into scale and this solves a major problem, we looked at China and worked at China for the past two to three years, did the clinical trials under supervision of God and was very successful with joint time and so on. So it's kind of, we started there and now with this kind of nuclear winter and the FDA deregulation in the US, we look at both, we look at the US. Just one quick question. Sure. power consumption and the size Yes, yes, we have the smallest form factor because we are the only SOC. And our power consumption versus the rest of them, which are always a stack of four or five chips, is about 15% lower. When you go inside the ear, the amount of power one can deliver due to laws of physics of putting the microphone and speaker together is limited to mild to moderate losses. And most of the people who need it, they need power. And that's formed behind the ear or speaker in the canal. So that's how you deliver power to those who really need it. 
which are the elderly who have lost the hearing or children who need the power. So we have done that too. I have in the ear models as well. But the majority of market today uses behind the ear. About 80, 90% of market is today for products that go behind the ear. Any other? Yeah. What's your activity? Is it to emanate to one of the other players? Or Right. So, um, sure. So, um, obviously, exits can be either of the above, uh, depending on where you are, and we're happy to entertain any of the partnerships. As far as the um, amount of funding, um, the bridge of two allows us to get the next milestone. We do that on convertible, and we don't need to worry about a price round. Five would be the lowest, and again, and that allows us to look at both sides of the pond, whereas the bridge only focuses back on the U.S. until the relationship part of it is resolved and we're in a better position. So I'm seeing a sign that says wrap up, so I'm going to uh, yield to the next right, one. And yeah. if anybody wants to try it or have a test or whatever, I'm here. I'm going to be here. Thank you.